and welcome to Borders Rugby Special. Today the Green Yards will play host to a Border Derby that always guarantees an entertaining afternoon of rugby as Melrose welcome gala in yet another national and Border League game. It's a must-win situation for both teams if they want to be in contention for the top spot of Division 1. However, with Gala coming in off the back of a heavy loss to Ayr last week and Melrose riding high with seven wins on the bounce, it's going to be a tough game to call. Now, to take us through the afternoon, let's join our commentary team of Dale Clancy and Sam Matthews. Yes, welcome along to what is perhaps one of the most bitter of all border rivalries going all the way back to the birth of these two clubs. The battles between Melrose and Gala have been absorbing over time and when both have been at their peak of their powers they've often been separated by some distance in the Scottish rugby landscape but not now. Their geographical position is perhaps a reminder as to how close these two teams are as they look to put a place name down at the top table of club rugby once again. Melrose the host rejuvenated under the guidance of Bert Grigg sit in third in National 1 with Gala in fourth who are perhaps still thinking about what might have been had they taken their chance last year just being pipped to the post by Herriot by a point in this division and uh, we're just about to get underway Struan Hutchison who starts for Melrose this afternoon he's got the uh, ball in his hands it's going to be Melrose getting us underway they'll be kicking towards the town end and Michael Todd gets proceedings going here at the Green Yards and it's a high testing kick to start off straight down the throat of Scott Peffers who is submerged in a, a cluster of black and yellow jerseys and back into the pocket is Craig Dodds who's just stabbed it downfield into the clutches of David Colvin who just gallops over the halfway line a little hop skip and a jump as he makes some good headway into the gala half now over the 10 metre line now Donald C uh, Douglas Crawford sorry finds Struan Hutchison who's just found a huge chasm inside the gala half the defensive line splintered as he offloads out the tackle but gala managed to get back and it's kicked downfield by Keith Young but certainly an early opportunity there for Melrose to get the first score in this game and David Colvin, the, the spark in the initial move, has to track back to cover that ball as it's kicked downfield as Peffers now on the ball. He's found a little bit of space over on the far side, but it looks to be well covered by James Brown. He's got Ben Gill hunting him down, and James Brown has done very well to stay in the field of play. Just inside his 22, he's tried to bounce that clear into a supporting player's hand, but Gala all over that. Michael T Todd got a quick look at that. It's going to be a penalty to Melrose. And it's been an absorbing first couple of minutes here. Melrose managed to kick down in towards the Gala 22. They've got a throw into the line out. And they managed to hit their target there. It's been well gathered by Will Ferry. As Melrose looked to try and get that mall driving forward towards the Gala line. And uh, Douglas Crawford is in there digging about looking to try and release the ball just when Michael Todd tells him to do so. And the opportunity is now into the hands of Mitch Richardson, he manages to stay tall, it's now in the hands of Donald Crawford, who's got knees to the ground, his well protected knees with two pads covering them under the CG surface, but there's some space over on the far side and I think Melrose are going to squeeze in for the opening score of this game, there was an abundance of space on that far side and Gregor Lindsay dives in for the opening score. Yeah, that was a great try there by Melrose, the opening try. What is really apparent is their dominant weapon is the line-out drive from five metres out. Now, it's a case for Gala of, we know what's coming, we have to make sure we defend it well, but it's a case for Melrose of, if it's not broken, don't fix it, and it's proven to work there with the mall, the, the retention of the ball, and then just shipping it wide with the speed of pass from people like Doug Crawford, people like Struan Hutchison. They have that crisp, flat pass, and they can just get people moving at pace, and from that distance out, it's impossible to stop. Melrose over different guises over the last perhaps five years as the, the landscape of Scottish rugby has changed slightly. It has been a constant here at the Green Yards, that drive and malt. They used it in abundance in their, their dominance in the early periods of 2000 up until the birth of Super 6. And now it's going to be David Colvin to try and add the extras as he's straddling the, the touch line over on the bank inside. He's made a good connection with that. And the touch judges as well raise the flags and that's an excellent kick from the side and it's uh, first blood to Melrose scrum half Lachlan Johnson is the replacement captain and he's got to try and lead his charges to defend in this line as Melrose throw into the line out they don't get a clean connection with that from the jumper but they've managed to grab that back on their side as they drive towards that line Michael Todd now down on one knee trying to have a little look but Melrose are not happy that they're grounding it yet they want to try and get this ball back and continue playing 
He managed to pass it at the hands of Rudy Lindsay. He's driven over the line, but the referee, Michael Todd, has just indicated that's been held up by Gala. There's a, a little bit of a wind here at the Green Yards. It's going pretty much from the, uh, the end banking side at the road. It's straight down the pitch if you're looking at the flags on the far side. So Gala certainly have the certainly have the, the wind at their backs as they kick the ball into the filming position we've got here. So hopefully Kelly Mitchell is okay on the far side. The cameras went off so it doesn't bode well, <laughs> but she's still standing, so all is well and play continues here at the Green Yards. And it's up to the very experienced Craig Dodds to try and narrow these margins. Right footed kick from far out. He makes a good connection with that, has been watched closely, and it's successful. Scott Peffers with number 10 on his back, Craig Dodds with uh, number 13 on his back. It's um, two players who probably look more like each other than anybody else in the field, but Gala now, from the mall, they've managed to hit their target in the line-out. Now the bodies bundle in, it's well protected at the back of that mall, they just need to get the ball down, and they've grounded it. And I think that might be the youngster, James Glenn Dinnant, who's going to get that score. He comes up. Pumping his chest, a couple of slaps on the back as well. And good work there from the forwards. An accurate line out, and they managed to drive that forward. And for a forward pack who was under the cosh in the scrum, have certainly flexed their muscles in the loose. I was about to say the exact same thing. We spoke about missing Tamasitas and Captain Liam Scott. It didn't look like they missed them there, did they? That was great, great execution. They got the ball down fast, back slow. Everything that you say when you hear a coach describing young players how to maul, how to scrum, how to ruck, low, fast, flat backs, and then they just went through there and it was dominant. And now Lachlan Johnson, he's got Glenn Bruff offering up a carry. As Gallo looked to try and go through the phases here and try and build some head of steam, is in the hand of Craig Dodds, who has met with two Melrose challengers, just centre field, as Gallo come against the grain. And they've got an overlap here if they can use it. Ben Gillops not to use James Glendon and he's going to go centre field. Is he going to break the first challenge? He does, but he's bundled down in the second. And Gala now knocking at the door yet again from what was a good Melrose attack. It's turned into an excellent opportunity here for Gala as they pass back towards the five metre line. The challenge is coming from Melrose as they drive their opposition back. The players now digging about with the breakdown. Lachlan Johnson was just wrapped up there. And wrapped up really well by the opposition. They look to try and come against the blind side yet again. Gala camped on the five metre line. Lachlan Johnson shouting orders, getting the forwards round the corner. James Glendinnan is there in support, but they're just shy. A couple of metres short of the Melrose line yet again. A couple of carriers there. One of them is Wilson. That's Taylor Wilson, who's carried the ball forward and has been driven back, but does well to present that ball. Thank you. Johnson again finds Dodds. Dodds has got some support on his shoulder, but got slightly isolated there as Andrew Mitchell carried forward. And it looks like James O'Neill is all over that ball. The attacking scrum has been reset for Melrose. Just on the five metre line, a replacement, Glenn McCrum has come on for Gala. We'll see what his impact is at this set piece. Again, Melrose just nudging forward, starting to decimate this Gala scrum. It gets closer and closer to the line, but they use the free ball. Hutchison, he's got an angle there, and Donald Crawford is sailing in on an abrasive cut. He dives over for a score, and they didn't need the penalty try from the scrum. The forward ascent, the dominance up front, set the platform, and just some fast running in the backs allowed Donald Crawford to go over for a score. Yeah, and Donald Crawford's a big, heavy player. He's nimble as well on his ankles. He knows how to turn, and he knows how to make players miss. And when you have a scrum that's going backwards like that, alarm bells have got to be ringing for Stuart Johnson and his side right now underneath those posts. Because, as I said, the line-out is dominant, they know from previous games, but in a scrum that's going backwards at a rate of knots like that, how do you get some solid possession and some solid time with the ball in your hands as a gala side? In the defensive line, Gala do look very vulnerable and somewhat porous. And Mr. Consistent with the boot. Now David Colvin adds the extras, a conversion. It takes us to 14 points to eight. Melrose now back in front. The scrum again from Melrose is dominant. They've got the, the penalty advantage. As Crawford looks to try and offload Ben Gill now. Picks up the ball. He was in for a score and what would probably have been a certain score had the penalty advantage not been there 
Uh, James O'Neill was breathing down his neck, but I would have fancied Ben Gill in a foot race there to, to go in for a score. But fortunately for Melrose, they come back for the penalty. He's off now, right? off the support is there, and Crawford arrives with the ball, and now into the hands of the, the most recent try scorer, Donald Crawford. And Mitch Richardson's now evaded the challenge. He's got some support there, David Colvin. He looks to try and release his teammate over on the far side, but he's not able to gather the ball. And it is a knock-on opportunity gone there for Melrose, but again, just showing that sort of open field running, the skill set that they have in this back, these backs. Mitch Richardson has been very impressive throughout the, the opening stages of this first half. Uh, but just not able to capitalise there on the space that they created. Lachlan Johnson box kicking downfield and again. David Colvin, he takes his 400th ball from the air in this game and passes on to his big brother Bruce, who just rockets the ball into the clutches of Donald Crawford and Mitch has just run a great line there, Mitch Richardson. And just running off the shoulder, an abrasive, acute line, splintering the defence. And now Melrose, with their tails up, look to try and take advantage and stretch the lead in this fixture. We've got Thomas Brown running at the angle, charging towards the Gala line. But he's been well dealt with by the Maroons. And now Callum Cruikshank has a little knock at the door. Bruce Colvin digging about in there, looking, trying to go it alone. Now at the hands of the replacement, Elliot Rudvin. He looks to try and get underneath the Gala defence. They eventually do. Melrose get over the line. It's a attritional play, really short from Melrose. And it looks like it was Big Thomas Brown's, the, the boy getting the pats in the back there. He's uh, back in Melrose colours after spending some time at, at Selkirk in the Premiership last year. Obviously hoping to nail down a place for the, the Knights and progress his rugby career, but back at his hometown club and the smile on his face says it all after that try. Yeah, and what a what a run from Mitch Richardson there. That was some line beautifully set up by Donald Crawford to just send him through, but he was galloping through there. Both of us kind of took a breath at how easy he carved through that back line and then, as you said, very attritional, smart rugby from the forward pack there, just setting it up at nine. Low, hard, fast, powerful rugby and that's all you need to score a try. And that is half time and it was a, a great end to the half for Melrose. He started it really, really well. It takes a half time score here to Melrose 21, Gala 8. Scott Peffers gets play back underway for Gala, who are looking to try and claw their way back into this game. They currently trail the host Melrose 21 points to 8. No, There's Douglas Crawford, in passes into the hands of Stroon Hutchison who just levels it straight downfield. It's been gathered well there by Callum Pate who passes the ball on to Peffers who spills the ball to Gill who puts boot to ball. He used to try and find some space and he's found a little bit and has dribbled over the uh, touch line there. He's went out for a, a line out, it's going to be a throw into the line out for Melrose. Set, Elliot Rudvin, hoisted highest in the line out, brings the ball down. Sideways, line it over. And now the, the mall is trying to get some head of steam over on that bank inside. But not able to make too much inroads. The Stroon Hutchison tried to kick downfield, but the, the referee Michael Todd having none of that. It was a scrappy kick which was had a, a lot of maroon bodies in front of him. And now Melrose looked to go wide. It's into the hands of Bruce Colvin. He tried the old Maori sidestep to go over uh, Keith Young, but he's been wrapped up well. The support does come eventually as it's in the hands now of Ben McLean. He carries forward, making inroads into this gala defence. Stroon Hutchison back in the pocket on the 22, lumps it downfield. He's in the hands of Callum Pate again. He must have been watching uh, David Colvin in the first, hand, the first half with uh, a lot of interest because he seems to have taken up that retriever role at fullback now, playing with his face in the wind now. He's going to have a, a long second half. Staring down the barrel of the, the kicking game of Melrose and Thomas Brown now at an acute angle, splinters the line, passes a great ball back in field and now Douglas Crawford evades two challenges, he's got some support there but he's not going to need it, he scampers over the five metre line and goes in for a score and it's the bonus point try there for Melrose and it all started with Thomas Brown, great tip on to Douglas Crawford and then he ghosted past about three or four gala players and that was excellent open field running from the scrum half and Melrose now over the line with a bonus point. 
Yeah, and then, like you said, Thomas Brown, that was a great line there. He saw the gap in front of him and he couldn't believe, it, believe his eyes. I mean, the guy's got a stride length of about five metres or something like that. He's absolutely rangy. But then you've got the absolute opposite in Douglas Crawford, who is small, nippy, nimble, accurate. And then he said he made players look foolish there. He made them miss and he ran. And I think there was about four or five players in the back line outside him waiting to take the ball if he did need to pass it on. But Doug Crawford, a very fast player and a very intelligent rugby player, was never going to need any help to run in at that speed. David Colvin keeps his 100% record so far, adds the extras. Melrose 28, Gala 8. Peffers acting in the scrum half into the hands of Angus Dunn, recently returned after following Scotland women in New Zealand. And has been well retrieved there, out of nowhere by Glenn Bruff. I don't know where he popped up from. And then now into the hands of Wilson, just passes it out the back. Now Peffers, a great ball into the hands of Pate. Great offload there as well. And now Glenn Dinnan, he passes the ball onto Ben Gillen. Now he's got open prairie to run into. He goes back in field, he evades the first challenge, looks to get the offload on. But Melrose are there, back on the five metre line. Gala almost knocking at the door. And it's Melrose who get back in defence. And I think it was perhaps David Colvin, one of the players who got back there. But there was a few uh, black and yellow shirts defending for their lives on that line great attack and play from Gala but it comes to it comes to nothing because they don't return with any points great defence from Melrose yeah great cover by uh, Dave Colvin there but also it was I think it was Doug Crawford and Struan Hutchison I think the 9 and 10 ended up following Ben Gill out there and Ben Gill, he, he got caught in two minds of do I come back inside and wait for the support yeah, or do I have to try back up, myself because he's against good tacklers there if he sees David Colvin running over and players like that. So, yeah, like you said, great defence and then a great, great skill by Dave Colvin there to just attach himself to that ball and just not be moved. And now Melrose throw into the line out. Gregor Lindsay again retrieving the ball from the sky. As the driving mall now makes some heavy inroads, it's again crabbing across the field towards the stand side and they splinter free off the side the offload was almost on there for Melrose but to no avail this time Struan Hutchison the pass is into the hands of Donald Crawford who just ghosts through that's a great step there he's got options left and right he's going to use David Colvin David Colvin's got Richardson in support and it looks like the Canadian is going to go over for a score under the sticks and out of absolutely nowhere Melrose scored a try and that is as good a try as you'll see yeah, Mitch Richardson, and you have to say after his first half performance, he's definitely deserved to get his name on the score sheet today. He has been phenomenal in setting up plays and phases, and then once again, captain fantastic today, David Colvin. He, I think he's only put one foot wrong, and that was that pass he threw that ended up being a knock-on. So, yeah, very simple rugby there. Good line-out, good line-out mall. Maybe they've gone a bit inside more for some people's likings, but they, they capitalised on the play they were given by the referee, and they scored from there. It was simple. Donald Crawford with a great line as well. Really made Tim McAvan a miss, targeted a fresh player who hadn't got a feel for the game yet. David Colvin now to add the extras. It's uh, the easiest one he's going to have so far. He does just that. 35 points to 8. And Melrose now lead. And they've uh, certainly got revenge from their 26 point to 5 defeat here in October last year. Okay, two lead it. Okay. And Gala look to try and make some slow and steady yards. And it's gaps there open. And Rutherford is through a slight foot. There he goes past the first defender. And he's been wrapped up by David Colvin. And it shows you exactly what this youngster can bring to this Gala side. Now, Gala in behind, looking to try and take advantage of that loose bit of defensive play from Melrose. Not able to now. They've been driven back slightly as Lachlan Johnson into the hands of Glenn McCrum. Glenn McCrum tips on to Bruff. And Bruff is driven back slightly, but manages to get the ball back as McCrum plays scrum half. Pate through the hands. Angus Dunn now launches on to Keith Young. And Keith Young just juggles the ball and not able to gather it. It looks like it's getting pretty scrappy in there at the breakdown. And it's going to come back on Melrose's side and Thomas Brown yet again charging forward, dropping the shoulder straight into the, the maroon hearts. And Bruce Colvin now has found a gap. He offloads and it's another offload there just about goes to hand from Ben McLean. But it's just been drifted forward and knocked forward by Melrose as they look to again go through the, the open door in the gala defence. There's going to be a penalty. And I think oh, yeah. Michael Todd is just signalling to it. Nah, you've come straight off your feet. Is it Bruce Colvin with a, a yellow card? Well, it's definitely not a first. It's went to the tail. It's drifted to the side, but James O'Neill is it uh, ended up with the ball in hand, and he goes over the gets over the gain line. Now Douglas Crawford again looks to go inside McCavan and does just that and. and Outrageous that offload into the hands of David Colvin oh. and then Mitch Richardson 
and then the replacement Elliot Ruthven on the shoulder goes in for another score and Melrose are rampant yeah that was great running by all involved there Donald Crawford Mitch Richardson's offload Ruthven to keep pace on the line and not overrun it and then James O'Neill from the very first start I hate bigging him up but that was a great line to really get that front foot ascendancy there and great clear out as well the speed of ball and turn of pace was unbelievable there by that Melrose back line Melrose look impressive they are looking like a different beast to what we've seen last year in this fixture because it was a, a completely different scenario it was Melrose 5 at Gala 26 and then in the return fixture in February it was 13 points to 10 again at Gala but Melrose now are uh, winning this at a canter Angus Dunn packs down at the, the rear of the mall as it looks to go forward but Thomas Brown is is uh, turned into Michael Phelps as he swims through that mall. He does a great job of getting through and making a making a real mess of that attacking mall for Gallup. And Thomas Brown is perhaps having one of his best games in a Melrose shirt. He's been impressive in attack and there in defence as he swam through and put pressure on the Gala attacking mall. It never looked comfortable. It looked too congested and too narrow. The policeman's corner is where in Gala are now. The flag just fluttering in the in the wind. So they managed to go short, but it's just popped off the head of a, a Gala player. It's scrappy, but they're managing to scrap for it as well. And drive forward towards that Melrose five metre line. Now the cavalry comes, Glenn Bruff. Again carrying hard, but not making too many yards as he carries forward. Peffer's going back inside to Rutherford. Rutherford's got Pate. Pate had Young outside him, but it looks like this bouncing ball falls to David Colvin. It could be an opportunity here for Melrose, but it's well covered there by Andrew Mitchell. Scampering across the field, just stabs it out. Douglas Crawford now just mops his brow. I'm sure he's, uh, he's barely broke sweat in the second half. He had a, an excellent try to start us off, but... He's had a pretty easy run in so far. Now Bruce Colvin has returned to the field. He's released his brother David. He's over, it's Strewn Hutchison, sorry. He's over the halfway line. He's got support there. And James O'Neill is going to go in for a score. And that'll be a well received score here at the Green Yards. He just makes it over the line. Melrose break free from their own 22. And it went through the hands. Bruce Colvin managed to release Strewn Hutchison. And James O'Neill gets the try. And I'm sure he'll be beaming on the plane as he leaves Scotland for pastures new at the end of this game. That's an excellent try from the, the back row forward. Well, that's it. Him and Mitch Richardson both get there, both get a try on their final game for Melrose. They'll enjoy that. It was a great game and never gave up and got his just rewards for being the man that got to put the ball down on the other side of the try line. David Colvin with the extras as well. 49 points to eight. Now Melrose into the hands of Douglas Crawford who's put the afterburners on he's got some support on the inside he's not looking to use it but he puts it a boot to ball kicks downfield he's going to dribble that forward and is it going to bounce right for him it just doesn't then it goes out it's been kicked downfield to his brother David and is he going to go for a drop goal he's went for a really ambitious drop goal I'll tell you what it had the accuracy it just didn't have the distance it's now just went in beneath the sticks and uh, that would have been the most outrageous of drop goals to to get for Melrose as Peffers breaks free from inside his own 22 steps and goes over the top of David Colvin perhaps a little bit of revenge and now Angus Dunn is going to go in for a score it's Elliot Ruthven hearing down on him Angus Dunn puts out the fend he's got the offload there and it's a great offload to Keith Young and he's going to go in this corner for a score and the game certainly opened up there it all came from the, the drop goal attempt from David Colvin and he was charged over in the, the open play there but brilliant break there from Angus Dunn great offload and Keith Young was the benefactor on the end and goes in in the corner for a score yeah and that's a, that's a nice turn of fortune for Keith Young there he's had an unfortunate day where everything's came to him last minute and he's been hugged against his try lines he's been bundled into touch most of the day but Angus Dunn he's been phenomenal mostly on the defensive side of this game because Melrose just have managed to hog the ball but Angus Dunn has had a great tr a great rangy run there and that was a beautiful offload to set Keith Young in for the final 15 metres of that journey 49 points to 13 with the kick to come for Gala's most recent try and it's an excellent conversion attempt there from the replacement Harris Rutherford Harris Rutherford tips the ball on to a player arriving at a rate of knots Andrew Mitchell was the player and he was not given a lot of room to move he got the ball in a very congested area but he done well to get it back on their side as play slows down slightly has been tipped on there by Fraser Wilson 
and uh, Kieran Cooney was there and I wouldn't fancy him for the halfway line but Scott Peffers now takes the quick penalty dances back in field and now Taylor Wilson there in support Kyle Scott having to act as the scrum half he looks to offload but it's been just plucked out of the air by Douglas Crawford and that is going to be them over 50 if he can evade Callum Pate he's just tracking him back but the scrum half turns round gives him a cheeky smile and gets the score a little shove at the end and a pat on the head and it shows you how much this means to Melrose and I, he read that from about three or four phases before mm -hmm. and he got the wheels turning got over the halfway line and he never looked like he was going to be caught and Melrose do eventually get over the 50 point mark 54 points to 15 with a conversion to come yeah, and you have to say how impressive has Doug Crawford been today. You could you could pick any one of the back line for a dominant performance today if we were doing a man of the match. But Doug Crawford, he's quietly gone about his work, quite similar to the front row in a way today. He's just made sure everything keeps ticking off, and almost like a metronome, he just made sure everything was just running smoothly the whole game, and he's got his reward with two tries this afternoon. But Douglas Crawford getting his second try, but the conversion there makes it 56, and we've still got about a minute left in this game. This will be eight wins on the bounce now. The two losses have came in the first three games, and it's almost vice versa with Gala, who started off very strong. They had four, five wins on the bounce, and now they've had a run of losses, which will be four in their last six. So, what is two very opposite training weeks are going to happen for these? Douglas teams. Crawford manages just to find the space in the gap there. It's Bruce Colvin going in, and that's going to be a very popular score here at the Green Yards. And the experienced member just goes and gives the hug to Rob Moffat, who's just lurking in behind the posts. And it's another score, and they're over 60. 61 points to 15 with the conversion to come. His brother is going to add the extras, and that is the cherry on top of what has been a very impressive and delicious cake yeah, here for Melrose. Worry, yeah, a dominant team performance throughout from 1 to 15 I plus the replacements. I wouldn't say anybody's had a below, a, a below 7 out of 10 game for Melrose, and I think that's just a, a sign of how well they have played as a collective. I'm going to assume this is the, the last act of play is that Melrose players just celebrate amongst each other. David Colvin and kicks that out of town and lets out a mighty roar at the end as he throws away the kick and tee and then goes up to shake hands against the opposition. But it is a huge, huge victory here for Melrose. They have put a massive stamp down in the race for promotion. This will really hurt Melrose that they're in National 1. And I think that performance shows how much it means to them that they want to be back at the top table in Scottish club rugby because one of their near rivals in the league, four points separated them early on in the, in the league standings. But it finishes here, Melrose 63, Gala 15. Yeah, I'm still trying to kind of put into words of feelings. I mean, of course I'm happy. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to get a, a result over Gala, but I think we were due a performance like that. Um, it was a massive day here at the club and we just wanted to put on like, a really good club effort um, and I think that's what we did there today. Difficult one to take, especially here. I mean, no one likes getting beat, what, 63-15, but especially your, your arch enemies, Melrose. But I mean, they were the better team on the day. They were faster, stronger, can beat us to every breakdown sort of thing. And we have to lick our wounds a wee bit and get on with it and train Tuesday, Thursday and go back to what Sonian's away on Saturday and try and bounce back and get a good performance there. From the full-back position, you see a lot. Uh, I feel like I've um, always got a sore throat at the end of the game for the amount of screaming that I do. But uh, no, I think the, the boys, were, there's a good solid collective at the minute. Um, everyone's kind of on the same wavelength. So uh, it's not really too much pressure on myself. You, you, you back everyone in that squad to, to play with this position to get picked in. And you just have to, I mean, we train every week, so there's, there's no excuses for not like having playing with training with each other. And again, it's, it's a tough one to take because you can think of it from every angle. And it's just a case of like, we could have done this, could have done that. And it's just. At the end of the day, you weren't good enough, eh? It's been known from Merrill's in the past, or a couple of seasons ago or whatnot, we have that, these lull points in the second half where we kind of we roll over at the back, we show our belly and let teams ease back into games easy enough. But I think the message was clear today that, no, we're going 100% throughout the second half and kind of foot down uh, and a score link and it represents that. Our line-out today I thought was, was good, came with Hassel, Damon, our Mollis, with the scrum, we, we lack some, we lack size, kind of big second rows, or, kind of, we've got good players, I'm not disrespecting the players we've got, but we just miss weight, kind of say Tamp, Marius and stuff's away, kind of that's 140-50 kegs you're missing, and it's just trying to get that, the bond from the backs to the, the forwards, eh? and when you're on the back foot the whole time, can Angus done at eight, it's a nightmare for him trying to get the ball away, and, Again, it's just one of the things you're going to have to work on a wee bit at training. So it was disappointing, uh, obviously, away to Stirling. Um, I think it's so early in the season, there's still things to click. But 
after a good strong home performance like that today and from weeks weeks past, I think we just got to keep building, keep building and uh, should hopefully, again, things should click for us. The young lads today, they'll they'll be hurting just as much as I am, the, the older boys. And But these kind of games, you learn from them and they make you the better player that you are and, and going forward and your young boys, they'll bounce back and they'll have plenty of good days here as well, I'd imagine. They should just want to put it under the carpet and sweep away. Not the game that Gala were maybe hoping for, but Melrose putting 63 points past them has to be a celebration tonight for them. Next week we're off to Hoyk for Hoyk versus Edinburgh Ackies. Hope you can join us there, but from everybody at the Green Yards, cheerio.